Welcome to part three of this series. I've been very busy since the last video. I have received all the parts I waited for and I had to correct a serious mistake in my design. I'll show you that later, both the problem and the solution, or at least what I found to be the solution. For this build I plan to use these printed gears and I think they look quite good, but I'm a bit concerned about that they will be spinning without any proper set screw. The closed loop belts from China arrived the same day as the UPS Express shipment from Sweden, so that was complete waste. I also got the shims I needed, those are difficult to source locally. I could then finally complete this part, which is my favorite component on the 2.4, the mechanism for the belted sea. The attention to detail is uh, fantastic and I really like to work with this kind of designs. Throughout the assembly instructions they keep repeating that we should use thread locker and I will try to remember that in my build. These three stepper motors from the old printer will get new life in my new printer and they will be used for the belted Z drive. And I need to get the pulleys on and by following the instruction I could uh, orient them this way but that didn't work I had to turn them around and that was actually mentioned in the documentation so the documentation is really great and it foresees some of the problems you might meet during the build. You even get files for a printable tool you can use to set the correct height of this pulley. We have to remember to apply the thread locker as well and I'm sure this will prevent some problems. We'll then install the motor mounts. These are easy to mount and a very simple part. A few minutes later, all three steppers are ready. And yes, I did remember to use the thread locker. The next thing we have to do is to attach the bottom plate. That bottom plate will be used for attaching the feet. And it's a little bit fiddly because there's a M5 nut that keeps falling out. I like to simplify things so I just started using a short bolt to keep the nut in place until it's been attached and oriented the right way. The Voron instructions has call outs for all fasteners, length and type and that's very convenient. And it's a big difference from the prototype I'm building, which is the rest of this printer where I have to figure everything out as I go. With all the components ready, I can start assembling them onto the frame. As you can see, I'm using the cheap T-nuts as I mentioned in my previous video. The next step is to attach the motor mount with a stepper motor and it slides in like this and the mechanism for tightening and tensioning this is quite ingenious. You simply attach this small arm, secure it with the M5 bolt And then you just set the tension like this and then you attach the two bolts firmly. Simple and brilliant. The finishing touch on this is just to add some rubber feet. I just use this nice looking bolt for the rear center motor as the feet will be in the corners of the printer. This is what the frame looks like upside down. Okay, so now let's get to this design problem. The thing was that I just copied the Trident as is, and that's a mistake because the Trident uses MGN rails in the corners. I just copied it as is, and that doesn't work. You have to have the spherical bearing 
in line with the front rod so it won't move sideways. I have never worked with this type of bearing, but several people in the comments called this out early. I just had to see it before I understood the problem. So at the front of the printer we can fix this by just getting everything in line. But there's a different problem with the single rear rod. You can't stabilize a single rear rod with a rotating bearing with this kind of spherical bearing in addition to that. You have to do something else. I decided to replace the rod with the MGN12, which I had in stock, and that solved the problem. What I could do was to have two rods in the back of this printer, but then I would have a single stepper that moves both of those two rods, or I could add four motors, but it doesn't make sense to me to try to twist the heated bed plate. This is the new version of the front of this printer, and you can see that the spherical bearing and the rod is in line with each other. I kept the rear belt and tensioning system and just changed to the MGN rail. I then printed the front mounts again. These are just a mirrored pair. And this is the rear mount. With the extrusions in place we can check that this is firm and doesn't move any way sideways or back and forth and uh, this looks quite good. And just to be clear, MGN rails would have been best for all of these. But let's try this out and see how it goes. I'm using the power supply from the old printer with the wiring and everything, even with this strange fan duct. This is what it looks like from below the printer. And I also kept the power connector, switch and fuse from the old printer. And this is the fan duct from the outside. The airflow will be directed to one of the Voron fan positions. And this is obviously a 3D printed part from Longer or Alphawise or whoever produced this printer. For this build I'm using two Picos, one at the top of the printer and one in the skirt, and I will just have a USB between them. I highly recommend this video from Candor Creations, he explains how to configure this. There is no way I will turn this printer upside down to do some work on the electronics. So I'm building this, I call it a caddy, to have this SKR Pico in the skirt easily accessible. It will slide in like so, and since this will be connected only to a few components in the skirt, it will be easy to make the wires long enough for this. I'll use a MOSFET module for the heated bed. The build order in this project is kind of strange. I started with the skirt, with the front, and then this is the rear. I even added a small detail for V4, had too much time that day I guess. And this is the side of the printer, it's almost identical on the other side. The beam or bridge across the printer is for the bottom cover. I've started building on the gantry and the A and B drive. I'm using some very strange stepper motors, dual shafts. I've had them for a long time. This is maybe a use case for them. The rear brace is also in place now, so that part is completed. This is what the printer looks like as I'm about to publish this video. I now have to work on the front idlers and that's going to be difficult. That's all I had this time. Hope to see you back for part 4. Bye for now.